The image of the Good Shepherd shows us how the risen Christ brings us to life. It is the relationship between the shepherd and the sheep, one of mutual knowledge and love, that gives the shepherd authority. The shepherd's willingness to lay down his life for the sheep shows his love. First John illustrates what it means to lay down our lives for one another by the example of sharing our wealth with any sibling in need.
Good morning and welcome to worship on Sunday, April 25th, 2021. I don't have much to announce today except to remind you that the annual congregational meeting is this afternoon at 1 o'clock p.m. via Zoom. If you do not, do not have that Zoom link uh, that was in your weekly email, please call my cell phone at 816-519-2314 and I will make sure and send it to you. Thanks and have a great week. We hope to see you at church soon. Hello and welcome to worship for this fourth Sunday of Easter. We begin with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord Christ, Good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us and we shall be whole. Make us one with you, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. first reading is from the fourth chapter of Acts. The next day, the rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem. 
with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they, when they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. Today's psalm is the 23rd psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever.
The second reading is from the third chapter of 1 John. We know love by this, that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son Jesus Christ and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. The gospel reading is from the 10th chapter of John. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Just this past week, I shared, saw and shared a video on social media. The caption said, This is Jesus and the sheep is me. And it showed a video, it showed a scene of a sheep who had fallen into a deep trench and was quite stuck and unable to free itself. A young man, obviously acting as a shepherd, carefully pulled the sheep by the leg up to level ground. And as soon as the sheep had its footing, it ran away with all its effort, took a mighty leap, and fell right back into the same trench from which it had been freed. We can only hope that the young man repeated his liberating efforts and that this time the sheep stayed clear of that particular pitfall. Sad though it is that this particular beast did not easily learn its lesson, the same can indeed be said for us. We are prone to make the same mistakes over and over, and yet Jesus, as the good shepherd, is prone to rescue. Shepherds were a common sight in Jesus' world, and they didn't just mean one thing. They represented, as you might imagine, the calm, idyllic life. Someone with a busy administrative job in the city might dream of one day moving into the country and becoming a shepherd, tending flocks while sitting under a shade tree and practicing songs on the lute. But there was another aspect to shepherds. They were also a metaphor for kings and prophets. Moses himself was tending the flocks of his father-in-law Jethro, acting as a shepherd when he saw that great sight of a bush that was burning and yet was not consumed. Then to receive his calling as a shepherd for all of Israel, leading her out of bondage and into freedom. So by calling himself the good shepherd, Jesus is calling to mind both peace 
and leadership. God given authority and tranquility. The particular aspect of shepherding that Jesus seems to be highlighting as he reflects on his role is that he is wedded to his flock. There might be others who are less connected to the flock, those hired hands who run away when the trouble comes, but that is not he. He is the good shepherd who takes his role with life and death seriousness. In fact, he will lay down his life for the sheep as a good king would do also for his people. And he goes on to say that his laying down of his life is central to his mission, but that death will not hold him. The other sheep which must hear his voice in this context must be the Gentile people who at this point in the story are not yet ushered into the fold but will be as they begin to be baptized and as the Holy Spirit falls also on them. Jesus will be the shepherd of a large and diverse flock. Jesus is recalling also the imagery of the Torah and the Psalms concerning shepherds. And all that must have meant for his hearers, especially that most beloved 23rd Psalm, which says that the Lord leads us to green pastures and beside still waters. Just this past week, we watched a film called News of the World, starring Tom Hanks. It takes place in Texas following the Civil War, a time, of course, of great upheaval and strife. Hanks portrays a man whose job it is to travel from town to town reading newspapers out loud as a form of entertainment to the largely illiterate crowds. In the course of his travels, he comes upon a young girl named Johanna, who, as it turns out, although is of German heritage, had been kidnapped when she was a toddler and raised by Kiowa Indians. Johanna speaks their language, honors their customs, and is by any measure culturally a Kiowa. But her Kiowa guardians are dead, and she has now been twice orphaned, and it then becomes Hanks' mission to take her across dangerous territory to a town where the relatives of her German family live. I won't spoil the particulars for you, but it's a story about place and about belonging and about the pursuit of peace and a life that can be so full of troubles. Hanks's character is obviously fulfilling the role of a shepherd in this film, guiding this vulnerable person through a physical wilderness, but also guiding her through the wilderness of wondering, who am I really? And where do I belong? Inasmuch this character is very much an image of Christ and what he does for us. It is easy for us to become confused about who we really are. The Bible calls the manifestation of that sin. Like the prodigal son who had been living all out of accord with who he was, sitting in the pig slop, which was the result of all his best decisions up to that point in his life, who the Bible tells us comes to himself, remembers who he is, and says, I will get up and go back to my father. Like him, we too are continually being called by the voice of the shepherd who says, follow me, remember who you are. You are a child of God. You are fed and forgiven. You have the capacity to bring holiness into the world. And when we know who our shepherd is, when we know who we are, and we know how to act like it, it is then we find that peace, which is so evident in the words of the 23rd Psalm. That kind of peace which praises God for what is and not what might be. It's such an interesting aspect of human nature that we don't really know how to find peace on our own. I'm going to move to the country. I'm going to become a shepherd, we say. But does leaving the city and changing our surroundings change our perception of life? Well, it can. I myself sometimes long for the days when I could walk out of the front door of our trailer and see no neighbors but only trees and trees for miles. There's a part of me that was formed by that life. 
Our environment can bring peace or take it, but we're also experts at wreaking havoc where there is none. I have sat in the middle of a pine forest in the gentle breeze in pristine and nearly untouched beauty and been anxious and full of bitterness and self-doubt and worry and fear. That's the problem with vacations. We take ourselves with us. As we're packing our swimsuits and snorkels, we're also packing our anxieties and feelings of emptiness. Now, I enjoy my vacations as much as the next person, and I hope you do as well. But God intends for us to have joy and peace more than two weeks out of the year. God intends for us to be fulfilled in our lives more than two weeks out of the year. Though we may take joy in changing our surroundings from time to time, though we might find relaxation elsewhere, and there is nothing wrong with that, we should not have to vacate our lives in order to have peace. That's the beautiful thing about the 23rd Psalm and about God's peace. You don't have to actually quit your job and move to find it. You don't have to go to a tropical island. Rather, there is a place of green pasture and still water within us to which God leads us. The true green pastures and still waters are found by listening to God and following His Word. When we do that, we make good and peaceful places out of where we are. What a beautiful thing that when we stop looking for peace outside of ourselves, but rather find it in obedience to God. A place becomes a place of peace and holiness because we are there. And indeed, that is what God has put us here to do. May you hear the voice of the Good Shepherd in your life and be reminded of that by that voice of who and whose you are. And may you follow that voice into doing the things that celebrate the fact that you are a sheep of his own fold, a lamb of his own flock. May you find green pasture and still water, not in some far off place, but in hearing and doing God's will and in the love and adoration of this Jesus who calls us from the far off places to which we are prone to wander, who gives us a home and a name and the peace of God which indeed passes all understanding. Amen.
Now let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for the waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one risen Christ, cleanse our hearts, shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God now and forever. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, let us now bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Loving shepherd, you know your own and your own know you. Your voice calls us to your loving embrace. Strengthen your church throughout the world that we bear witness to your expansive love. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Gracious shepherd, you are generous with the gifts of goodness and mercy. Restore your creation to wholeness so that cities and towns Countryside and wilderness may abound with life. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Hope-giving shepherd, the nations and peoples are your heritage. Place into the hearts of all leaders and rulers the passion to serve. Crucify any desire to overpower others and give leaders joy in lifting up the lowly. Grant justice to those who are persecuted. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Abiding shepherd, your love flows as we reach out to those around us. Move us with your spirit so that we lay down our lives for those in need. Help us to love one another in truth and in action. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Saving shepherd, you restore us to wholeness. Help First Lutheran in our life together and give us vigor as a people of faith. In the midst of challenges and opportunities, fill us anew with your Holy Spirit. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Eternal Shepherd, you hold us securely in your loving hands in the assurance of resurrection hope. We remember our loved ones who have died in you, especially Mark the Evangelist, whom we commemorate today. Bring us with them to dwell in your house forever. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Now let us pray using the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus. The God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Go in peace to share the good news. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Victim.
a shovel and I walked to the pine over 16 tons of number nine coal. And the boss man said, well, bless my soul, you 16 tons. What do you get? Another day. Yeah. 